Uh, gentlemen, your, your trunks are high. From here up is good. Pantalones están alto. Aquí arriba está bien. When I said that, those, good luck to both of you. Touch them up. Over the mano. Immediately evident, Corrales' size advantage, Freitas' take, not a problem. One of the best counter punchers in the business, Asselino Freitas, told us he will exploit Diego Corrales with lateral movement, using his foot speed. Popo is uh, generally a fast starter. Chico has had difficulty with guys who move around a lot, like Mayweather and Casamayor, but he made the adjustments in the second Casamayor fight. A combination of two-fisted power, leaky defense, questionable chin and a terrific hook and a formula for fireworks won't be a surprise if both go down this could be a tremendous fight you know it's important to note that Freitas is coming in off a seven month layoff his second longest of his career and for Corrales this is the first right hander he has fought in over a year he fought Damian Fuller then John Casamayor twice in a row so he's seen something he hasn't seen for a while some nice left hooks there by Asselino Freitas, another left hook. A major curiosity, what will happen if both Freitas and Corrales stand toe to toe and trade their best shots? We may see a double knockdown. Well, I'll tell you what, it's happening here in round one. While it's two Freitas is moving, both men are sustaining the action. Somebody's gonna get hit with a big shot soon. And Freitas, very aggressive, with a left-right combination upstairs. And Freitas using a lot of side to side, a lot of lateral movement to try and confuse Diego Corrales. Chico's trainer Joe Wilson felt that Freitas would be on his bicycle. Corrales said he wasn't so sure. But Chico, who's probably had the better level of competition, told us it would be a mistake for Freitas to come to war, feeling that he, Corrales, hits harder. One thing that's happening early in this fight is Freitas is throwing a lot of left hooks, some very wide. That could be a very dangerous tactic for him as this fight goes on. He could easily be countered by Corrales. And more recently, Freitas has become very awkward, herky-jerky, and unorthodox, which Corrales says he is ready for. Corrales looking to cut off the ring, use his jab and his hooks. And there's that side to side, frequently used by Freitas. Freitas walked into one and then a left hook to the net, but not much behind it. Freitas looking at the better of the two here in the opening round Keep thus far. A little low. There's a body shot with a left hand. Might have a little more sizzle to them right here. Corrales has not got, he established his jab very well against Casamayor. And there you see it. If he uses that punch a little bit more, it'll help him find the range with the hooks and the straight right hand. But Freitas' movement, of course, is an issue in that regard. Of course, Corrales' signature punch is the left hook. Very good right hand as well. And for Freitas, it's the, it's the right hand. And he just nailed it. Corrales with the right as they trade at the bell. Interesting first round. <laughs> Why was it beautiful? Sucker punches on you because your chin is tough. But you hurt him twice that round. You know that, don't you? Absolutely no Freitas against the ropes. Now, he wants very much to land those counter right hands, and he landed a couple of them. Despite the fact that he was wild with the punch, they did get in. That's what Freitas wants to land. Marcelino <laughs> Freitas has 19 knockouts within two rounds. Remember, he knocked out his first 29 opponents. Let's go. 
Got him a little quick. alarming to the Corrales people. Earlier, before the right you just referenced, there was another one that landed by Freitas. I don't think they anticipated he could land those rights with that kind of regularity against uh, Corrales. Now Corrales moving in, stalking. But Freitas tying him up. Freitas very elusive. Every once in a while does get nailed. But he has been landing with a left hand that got through by Osley Afraid. It's a long left. Almost a five-inch height advantage for Corrales. Big right hand by Freitas and a countering right by Corrales. But I think Freitas got the better. Corrales going for the jab now. Lefts again by Osolino Freitas. You know, Freitas is getting away early in this match with those wild, wide left hooks. Whether that'll continue remains to be seen, but as long as he gets away with it, he'll throw it. You know, we've seen many fights before where that rules of orthodox punches, Steve, don't get countered by people. Again, a series of wide shots, but we'll see if Corrales can, can counter with a straight right hand. Corrales unleashes a nice left hook to the jaw. Best punch of the fight for Corrales by far. of the unorthodox Asselino Freitas in his first two rounds. And it's a low fall to handle. I and mean, Corrales is having a little bit of a hard time landing those punches. Although he's had a better second round. Yeah, it may be a relief, as you said, for Chico not to be uh, facing a southpaw, but he does have a load in front of him here at Freitas. Freitas with a smacking left upstairs. That left has really found a home here in the first two rounds. Very close second round, though. This will be one of those that if this goes the distance, you'll we'll, we'll look back on this round, and it could be pivotal in a certain way. The elusive oscillate upright is slipping punches. Oh, hard left on the inside by uh, Diego Corrales. That certainly got Freitas' attention. Freitas still dancing around. His trainer Joe Goosen had to predict it. Now Freitas digging to the body. Freitas really up on his toes. Corrales more flat footed. Time. Our translator is out of the Monte. He's translating the Portuguese spoken in the corner. Okay. Frame. You need to give more concentration. Vamos a concentrar un poquito más en el golpe al pecho. We're going to concentrate a little more with the ultimate punch on the chest. This way, Freitas was able to get this lead right hand in, and he's, well, actually followed a jab, and that's the kind of rights that he landed pretty well early. But the left hook of Corrales, a very important weapon for him. There's a nice, short, compact one. Maybe his best punch of the fight. It is round three scheduled for 12 for the WBO Lightweight Championship. Osolino Freitas in the gold trunks with the, the red trim. Nice combination to the head by, by Freitas. Corrales in the white with the black trim. Freitas 35 and 0 with 31 knockouts. Corrales 38 and 2 with 31 knockouts. The Brazilians and the Freitas fans chanting Osolino's name. Popo, his nickname. I'm sure Chico and Corrales didn't expect the crowd to be this partisan on behalf of Freitas. Obviously, Brazilians come out from whatever community Freitas fights in, and uh, right now they're very much on his side. There is a heavy population of Brazilians in the Boston area, which is not far from, from Foxwoods. Freitas fights always a strong contingent of Brazilian fans on hand, and they always drown out the competition. Corrales landed a very nice straight right hand a moment ago. Now, one thing we've seen from Freitas, and this speaks to what Joe Gusa suggested, he said he tested his power early, test Corrales' power early, then move. One of the things that's happening now, though, is Freitas is moving well, but not landing that many punches as he was in the first round and a half. Freitas doesn't want to fight going backwards. Usually successful when he stops, leaps in, and lands his power shots. The right
right hand. Morales can fight going in either direction. He's had success. And of course, the key for Chico when he attacks, got to remember the defense, particularly versus someone with Freitas' power. And for Asselino Freitas, a good straight right hand up the middle. That's been the story of this fight, really, for Freitas. It is round four. We were talking to Joel Casamayor, who's fought both of these guys. He told us he felt Corrales would go down in this fight, but would get off the canvas to win, using his smarts against the Brazilian Asselino Freitas. We shall see. A little low. Keep him up. Let's go. recently showing that they are not one-dimensional. Of course, they rely heavily on their power, but they've also shown that they have good technical skills in their last few fights. Freitas is convinced that Corrales is more one-dimensional than him, and I think he believes he has the edge in hand speed. Now, we saw Corrales against Casamara Boxwell and with them using the jab. He's not been able to land the jab, and in this sequence, we see why. Freitas has given him so much good lateral movement that Corrales just can't get that jab in to slow him down. Corrales digging to the midsection as he was holding it with the left hand. Freitas picking his shots. Missing wildly with those attempts. Diego Corrales must make Freitas pay when he does all that wild missing, and he is not. He didn't even look to counter Freitas. Watch your head inside. Foot look. Look at Freitas on the ropes making Corrales miss. So far, the headline of this fight is the defense and elusiveness of Asselino Freitas. That left hand was blocked by the glove of Corrales. Oh, that was Corrales who got burned. It looked like Corrales was on the march. But a beautiful countering shot by Freitas. We talked before the fight about the counter right hands of Asselino Freitas. That was a beauty. About 15 seconds ago. And I'll tell you what, that landed flush in the head of the ground. Corkscrewed his head. Remaining in round four, scheduled for 12. I mentioned 
mentioned the seven-month layoff of Freitas. No indication that that's a problem. In his own unorthodox way, he's been as sharp as a tack. And he dominated his last uh, victim, Arthur Gregorian, the longtime lightweight champ with four knockdowns, although a couple of them were questionable. But still, it was all a pull -pull. We head for the Without bell and round four. Now. Nice sequence by Corrales. Freitas moving not wow. quite so quickly in the last 30 seconds of the round. You need to stop. You need to stop running. Stop, stop looking for him to punch in his head. You need to stop hitting higher. Okay, breathe. Are you okay? Are you okay? Stop, stop go head hunting. You need to hit the body. Cross, cross to the body. Stop head hunting. Huh? I know. I'm going to tell the ref. I'm going to tell the ref right now. I'm going to tell the ref right now. Okay. Hey, Mike. 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 You got to ring that bell loud because there's a bell back there. I can't hear. He's wrapping it on now. He's holding it down loud. Okay. He's going down. He's bending down low. Well, that's, a, that's legal, though. Oscillator Box. Freitas expending a lot of energy through the first four rounds. We'll see what happens from this point on. They seem very concerned in this corner about his win. And uh, a body shot with the left hand by Ossilia Freitas, who continues to move around a lot. Joe Goosen concerned that Freitas was, was pulling Corrales' head down. And then Michael Ortega, the referee, spinning back to Goosen. Well, Corrales is bending head, down to all. Goosen said, well, hey, that's legal. No. <laughs> You know, this is a very frenetic but effective performance by Ashley Freitas, but it does lead one to say that will this adrenaline wear off? Will he slow down? And will he be a target for Corrales, who just threw a low left hand? But not a bad idea for Corrales to get downstairs to the body, which he has not done very effectively so far in this bout. Talk.com, Frank with a deal, Lord Stern, Roger, Terry Price, Hartford Current. They all got the greatest ahead. I have a 39 37 for Freitas, so I'm pretty much in the mix with what they have. Right hand off the top of the head by Corrales. That stunned Freitas momentarily. Corrales showing some signs all of a sudden here. You know, it's interesting, Freitas told us, you'll see in the full hook, the nice hook on the inside by Corrales. That was Time. a superb punch. Time. A mouthpiece comes flying out of Freitas' mouth. Bad break for Corrales because he had him hurt. That's what sent the mouthpiece out. Hurry up. They take the time to clean it off during a uh, war. Okay, let's go. That's the uh, Time in. Room. And now Michael Ortega brings him back in. Freitas told us, you'll see my strategy in the first minute of the first round, but actually it's been just the opposite. The first minute of the first round, he was very aggressive, and Joe Goosen said what I thought was right. Then he decided to be a complete boxer, so a very different strategy since that first minute. Freitas missing wildly again, and Corrales not jumping on the opportunity. Corrales is starting, though, to find the range with that left hook. You see how it's coming? And he landed a very good one early in this uh, round. But he's still being outworked by Freitas. But a stunning uh, Chico Corrales continues to move forward. Measuring Popo out. But Freitas just so fast with the, the hands.
every so often use that little lead right hand in there when you get close, surprise him. But if you're going to use that lead right hand, drop that chin good. Got it, Johnny, okay? Now the right hand's starting to catch up with him a little bit. And your counter left hook. Okay, when he starts going to the body, that left hook's catching him. He'll sometimes throw it up. You know, you knocked his mouthpiece off with that left uppercut. You feel like you go 15, baby? Oh, all right. Yeah. Let's do 15, then you got to Again. Again. And this is what Joe Goosen was describing to Diego Corrales, this left half hook, half uppercut that would knock the mouthpiece of Freitas out as they were working on the inside. There it was, a good short left hook. And the mouthpiece flew right out, and it was a good break for Freitas that the referee stopped the action so quickly because uh, because Corrales was on impact. There are welts on the neck of Chico Corrales. I see it on the right side from uh, a headlock by Ocelino Freitas. <laughs> Something Joe Gushin was complaining about earlier. Nice little uppercut by Freitas. And then the jab of Corrales. Corrales will really, when he looks back at the tapes of this fight, will be very distressed that over the first half of this fight, he couldn't get the jab in better. Well, countering, shot there by Ocelino Freitas. Corrales, upon the advice of Joe Goosen, really going back to that left hook. And I tell you, if I was Corrales, I would be throwing that punch as much as possible. There's somewhat of a surprise, Al. We're in the sixth round, no knockdowns yet. Yeah, but a very active and spirited fight. No question about that. It has been uh, entertaining. Double left took downstairs by Corrales, and that's something I suspect they would have wanted him to, to start that's earlier in this fight, but it's still a very effective idea. Freitas continues to hammer away with combinations. And then he instantly gets out of range. Combatants missing there. They had an unofficial poll of 75 fighters and media people and promoters and all the rest. 45 picked Corrales to win and 30 picked Freitas. So it's interesting. A split, though, more people going for Corrales. But nice right hand by Freitas. What they're watching here tonight may be changing their mind. And better than 3,000 fans here in the arena. Rock Freitas, most of them do. in the eyes of Chico Corrales. Another right hand by Freitas bouncing off the noggin of Corrales. Time! Okay. And the keys to victory, we said that the right hand would be a very Important punch for Asselino Freitas if he was to do well. Well, it has been. He has landed a series of right hands throughout this fight. Some have been lead right, some have come after a jab like that one. Some have been straight, some have been wide, but for Freitas, that right hand has landed. Look at that counter right hand. And give Corrales credit. He has sustained through those punches because some of those are hard enough, I think, to have created a knockdown. Okay, ahora velocidad. Y consciente de todo, limitando el cruzado. Hay que limitar ese cruzado para que pueda. Ahora, si lo limitamos, hay que limitar el cruzado. Cuando you don't throw all cross hands, you need to stop throwing all the cross hands. 
You need to try to surprise him. We well, there you have it. Good luck, Our translator, Anibal Miramati, is helping us along with the Portuguese. It's been a steady diet of right hands by Oslino Freitas. Why not surprise him with the left for the instructions in Popo's corner? Let's see what happens. Look at this combination. Look right upstairs. Both of them connected by the Brazilian. Freitas with the great hand speed, the great right hand. Chico Corrales with the terrific chin. You know, Asselino Freitas, and you've done so many of his punches or his fights early on, really considered a power puncher, uh, not considered a very good boxer, not considered uh, the boxer puncher type, but he has really reinvented himself, and now he is very much the boxer puncher, but Steve still has the power that he had before. He has really become the complete fighter, not one-dimensional whatsoever, as Corrales goes on the attack, but a quick escape by Asselino Freitas. There's the press row story. It is close, except for Franklin McNeil of the Newark Star Ledger, as Freitas up by six points. Well, I have Freitas at 59-55, so I'm a little more in his category. Certainly, Corrales has landed some big power punches, though, and that may have an impact. Okay. Uh, some of his punches have been very strong, and uh, I just think more punches have been landed by Freitas. Step Freitas back. Uh, Step back. complaining to referee Michael Ortega about possible low blows. Ortega, the son of a, a fighter named Gaspar Indian Ortega, who had 176 fights. Only well, knocked out twice. Off his neck. Get off his his neck. Long world title fight to Amy Griffin. We approach the final minute, round seven. Corrales has been a little bit more effective in pushing Freitas back, but still has been countered a lot. And again, we point out here in round seven, all the energy expended by Freitas, we have to keep a very close eye on him to see if he could sustain this pace. Stay off his neck, all right? You heard the warning by referee Ortega to Freitas, stay off the neck. Uh, Chico, look at the quickness and speed of Oscelino Freitas. And then a covering right hand up top by Corrales. You know, Corrales believes that one punch can change this fight for him, and he better believe it now, because he's going to need that. A series of punches by Freitas. Freitas pouring it on at the end of round seven. Back comes a left hook by Corrales, but that sequence dominated by Asselino Freitas. But I'm not sure that left hook didn't stun Freitas momentarily. They're ringing the bell, and there are two seconds left. I heard the bell. Now they get it. I want you to fucking get it together and do exactly what you were doing. You're starting to catch him with that right uppercut. You stop using the jab at the end. You caught him with the right hand. So here we go again. I want that right uppercut, left uppercut, working on him. Turn the end of that Great exchange up. between these two boxers. The left hook and the straight right by uh, Freitas. In fact, the three-punch combination. Corrales wanted this kind of action and encouraged it with Freitas. Kind of urging him to come in, but there's the left hook toward the end of the round that I think kind of momentarily pushed Freitas back. But you can see that that was his fighter microcosm. More punches being landed by Freitas. It is round eight, scheduled for 12. No the WBO no lightweight title. Things really getting interesting now. So it is conceivable someone's record will change in that regard if we don't see a draw. Fans 
voices of Corrales chanting Chico being drowned out by the Coco fans. They're trying to urge Corrales on here in the eighth. Fred has landed a right hand a moment ago, then moved away, reset. He's looking to, to reload every time and then find a different spot. And once Corrales is ready to punch, he's not there. There's an example of it. Moving side to side, moving break, back, suéltalo, moving break, forward. Break, break, break. Coming in from no different angles, see, okay. trying to confuse uh, Chico Corrales. It has been exquisite strategy of late that has worked for uh, uh, Freitas. But there's a countering left hook by Corrales out of nowhere. From the right hand to the body by Freitas. Over it came the left hook of Corrales. Well, that had to give Corrales a lot. Oh, 
Sotomayor. Morales losing the first, winning the rematch. It's tight beat up along Fresh Row. Terry Price of the Hartford Current now has it all even. And that's exactly the way I have it. I have an even fight right now. But you can make the case for Freitas maybe being appointed to a head stuff. Morales coming back, using that jab, following it up with a nice right. This is a much more effective Diego Corrales. The jab's helping him. He's going to the body a little bit more. And less offense coming from Asselino Freitas than we saw earlier. So the first half of the fight, Marcelino Freitas in charge, and now Diego Corrales with the momentum. There's the jab. Yeah, Corrales now, the, the punch that he used so effectively against Casamayor. Very effective now, and that right hand that missed over the head of Corrales by Freitas, a very telling point. That was thrown very wide, kind of lazily, not like we've seen him throw the right hands earlier. Corrales did say his jab and his hooks would be keys. You have to love matches like this with all these ebbs and flows. There are so many different plot changes here. A lot of drama. Very competitive, entertaining affair here. Under oh, big hand down goes Freitas again.
Freitas retreated to the ropes. He will get nailed with this right hand. That one actually on the back of the ear, I think it hurt his equilibrium, but he'd already been hurt really just previous to that in a big exchange. And uh, that right hand knocked him on down and you see Freitas already showing signs that he doesn't want to continue. And now thinks about it and says, no, I, I can't go on. Uh, that a little bit surprising for a fighter who has been a warrior, though, you know, it's hard to second guess someone who took big punishment with uh, three knockdowns. We look from the top, and here was where that right hand, and actually that was a superb right hand that landed on the ear uh, area of Freitas. And after this third knockdown, you can see he's thinking about whether this should continue at all. And so those early brilliant rounds go for naught for Asselino Freitas because the power of Corrales ultimately wins the day. Freitas waving it off. From our man, ring announcer Jimmy Lennon Jr. No, I told you when you came on, we'd get all of them. That's right, coach. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of one minute. 24 seconds in round number 10. A referee in charge, Michael Ortega, acknowledges the fighter and his request, and a referee stops the contest. The winner, by way of technical knockout, and new WBO lightweight champion of the world, Diego Chico. So a defining moment in the career of Diego Chico Corrales. A shock Thank you. to Popo Freitas' fans as Freitas leaves the ring. Freitas quitting in round 10, deciding he didn't want to take any more punishment from Diego Chico Corrales after being put to the canvas on three occasions. Let's get it up to Jim Gray. Jim. All right, Steve, thank you very much. As we see Popo Freitas leaving the ring, Diego, congratulations to you. Thank you. Your thank assessment tonight, it seemed as though you were having trouble with Freitas early with his lateral movement and all of his activity. What turned this fight around? Actually, it was just taking my time, biding my time. We had our game plan. We knew the early rounds, keep the pace, keep things strong. My pace has been strong. We've worked hard. So we knew keep the pressure on, keep the pace, work behind the jab, work behind the head movement, and, and pound the body. So that's all we did. We took our time, and by the time we had 12 rounds, 45 minutes worth of fighting to do, so that's a lot of time to run. Did you? So you did figure that he was going to tire out with all that movement? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can't keep that kind of pace up. I was coming really hard, and I'm pounding to the body as much as possible, and you're missing shots, too. So we were, we were prepared for that kind of fight. And then you connected with him in the eighth round with your first of the three knockdowns. Tell us about what happened there in the eighth round, and, and it seemed as though... He got more than 30 seconds because he spit out his mouthpiece the first of two times. Yeah, you know, it, it just keep my eye on the prize. Like, I kept my eye in there, keep, kept everything nice and calm and co composed. I kept my defense real tight, and I was catching shots in down the middle, down the pipe. I knew, you know, later in the later rounds was where it was going to happen at. We worked on the straight shots down the pipe, keeping our, keeping our hands tight, and that's what, exactly what, what played out in all three knockdowns. It was nothing but simple fundamentals, hands high, shots down the pipe. Were you surprised that he quit? No mas? <laughs> Here's the history repeating itself. You know, I, I, I was shocked, yeah. Let me ask you, your corner was very upset, Joe Goosen and, and, and your gang over there, as were you, when he spit out the mouthpiece the second time. He got a point penalty, but you, did you think it should have been more severe for the actions that had happened? No, because, I, I mean, I want the ability to, to take care of my own job. I want to go in and do my job. Do I feel he should have been penalized? Yes, he was penalized. I'm happy with that. The referee did a great job of maintaining things. I leave it in the referee's hands every time. You know, if a, if a foul comes up, it's the referee's job to take care of it. The referee did a great job. I, you can't say anything about it. What do you want to do now? You've moved up in weight class. What are your plans now to do with this title? You know, you've got, you've got a lot of great champions out there. I'd love to see them all. Like I said, I'm here to clamp this division. I really want to prove that I am the best in this division. Um, it all comes down to proving it. And I'm going to, I'm going to put mine on the line. Is that I want, I want to know if everybody else wants to, too. Final thought, Diego. When you lost to Mayweather back January 20th, 2001, you took two years off. Did you ever feel you would be back in this position? I, was, I had faith. And I had, I had a great wife to, that when I did start to lose a little faith, she, uh, she kind of reinforced it for me, helped, helped me remember what I am and what I can do. Diego, tremendous performance tonight. Congratulations. Thanks. All right. Back to you, Steve Albert. All right, Jim, thank you so much. As we hear from uh, the victorious Diego Chico Corrales, who clearly was not 
the fans' choice, the people's choice here at Foxwoods. Let's take a look and listen to the end of the fight when Asselino Freitas said, no mas. 2007, 2008, hey, aquí, aquí. Okay, no mas, no mas. Well, the last time we saw and heard that, of course, was a fellow named Roberto Duran, which became kind of legendary. And now we see it tonight in uh, what turns out to be a terrific fight. Uh, some might call it a classic fight between uh, Ocelino Freitas and Diego Corrales. Three knockdowns in the fight for Chico Corrales after it looked like Ocelino Freitas had the momentum in the early going. Corrales, when he was able to get Freitas against the ropes, as he did here, landing a terrific right hand that would send Freitas down. This was the knockdown in which he spit the mouthpiece out the first time. It would not get a penalty, but it would be something that would be repeated and cost him. Uh, it got him a little extra time, however, and that may have been part of the reason why he was able to sustain and continue in this fight. In round nine, again, Freitas not showing quite as much movement, his hands are low, throws a right to the body and gets hit with a counter right by Diego Corrales. Almost every big punch that was landed by either fighter in this fight, it was off a counter move. Freitas had spit the mouthpiece out and would have a point deducted by the referee for doing so, thus making it a 10-7 round, though ultimately it would be academic because Corrales, who had already hurt Freitas to this point, would land a right hand on the top of the head and this created the situation in which Freitas got up, beat the count, but simply could not continue.